I know you're coming to watch another video about the Millennium Falcon. I know there are lots of other Millennium Falcon videos out there because I watched a lot of them while I was waiting. I had to wait for two weeks to finally get the shipping notification for mine. I've had it about 10 days. I know many of you are waiting even longer for yours. I'm sorry that you don't have yours yet, but I finally got mine put together. It took about 10 days to do it. So what are my first impressions of this? My first impressions are, wow, holy smokes, 7,000 pieces is a lot of pieces. This is not a project to be taken on lightly. It is a project that really can be draining sometimes. If you're, if you're at all compulsive and want to get something done, this is not the set for you because it will completely consume your time. I should know I really had to get a work on it when uh, it started taking over my desk and I had nothing, I had no place else to put it. So I knew I really had to get it done. So anyway, watching all those other videos, one of the big things that they said at the end was, but where are you gonna put it? Where are you gonna store it? What are you gonna do with it? Well, I hope you have some idea what you're gonna do with it before you start building the set, before you open your box, before you know where your box is, where you're gonna put your box, before you know where you're gonna put this set, because this is not a set that you wanna take apart again. This is not a set that comes apart into easy pieces that you can store. Once it is built, it is going to stay built. So today, what I am gonna to talk to you mainly about is how, where to put your Millennium Falcon once it's built, because that is where you're gonna store it. That's how you're gonna see it after it's built. Forever on after is where are you gonna store it. So luckily, this ship is about the same size, almost exactly the same size and dimensions as the old 10179. Therefore, a lot of the old solutions to how to store that set also work for this one. And I think one of the best solutions is the coffee table solution. So I pulled a few coffee table pictures out and they all have the old Millennium Falcon in it, but you could easily sl um, slide in the new one. And it allows you to be very, very creative. You can have cool dioramas set up. You can have just very Spartan. You can have, you know, extra stuff in there. A very, very nice solution is the coffee table version. Now I haven't, I looked around. I wasn't able to find any commercial sources of Millennium Falcon coffee tables. But any local cabinet maker, any local furniture maker would easily be able to build you the base or you can make your own and any glass company could easily cut you the pieces of glass that you need for the top. So it shouldn't be that complicated a project. Now, one of the things you can find are pre-made acrylic boxes. And if you search for acrylic uh, display case for 10179, you'll get a bunch of different manufacturers that actually do sell pre-made boxes for this size ship. I wouldn't recommend that for a coffee table because the acrylic obviously can scratch, but if you do have a big enough table or display shelf to display it, you could buy that acrylic box pre-made to fit the Millennium Falcon. Now it's hard to really do that because most display cases aren't 24 inches wide like this is, right? And so most display cases end at 18 inches wide or 19 inches wide or 20 inches wide. So you really have to have a dedicated spot to put this if it's gonna be going up on a shelf. So what are some of the other solutions that people have used? Well, one of the coolest solutions was mounting on a wall. So you can see mounting on the wall there. I don't know if I would do that with this one because some of these panels are so loose that I'm afraid if you mount it completely vertical like that, slamming a door or closing will cause things to shift or cause things to fall off. I don't know how much of those, I don't think those panels were removable on the old one. Another really cool option was using a mounting arm from a TV display and that mounted under here on the bottom. So you had to modify the bottom a little bit. Now this one is a little bit bigger or a little bit heavier than the other one. So you can see how much flex you get by lifting it up right in the middle. And now if we look at the video or the picture of the designer, notice how he held it with two hands. And notice how much less flex there is if you hold it with two hands. So if you were gonna use one of those mounts, I would probably do a wider plate with some L brackets and it would cause some modifications on the problem to really hold it. That would be a really, really good solution to do it that way, but that would require a lot of heavy modification. So what have I chosen to do? Well, what I thought would really work for me was to hang it because that I could do without modifying the structure at all. And it allows me more creative placement because what I'm planning on doing with mine is hanging it over my Christmas village, 
which I thought would be really cool. Maybe dropping presents out of the back with maybe a Santa C-3PO or whatever from one of the advent calendars. So hanging really worked for mine. So here you go. That's why I have this string here. So I tried to hook the string where the um, landing gear are because those landing gear are holding the Millennium Falcon up in structurally key points. So you can see I have it back here with the back landing gear, then also up towards the front. And what it allows is threading it through the internal uh, frame is it allows you then to pick it up, right? And now it really is a playset, right? We can fly this thing around, right? Pew, 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 right? An $800 playset I got here, right? This is how to do it. Now, one of the other cool things that you can do when it's like this is if you do want to modify how it, if you want it to bank, right? I can slide these a little bit. So then I can pick it up like this and then straighten it up, right? And now I can fly it around and I can bank it. And now this hanging is going to be how I'm going to display mine. Now you'll notice that it does have a little bit of flex, right? When I pick that up. So I don't think long term hanging it is a really, really good solution. It just provides too much stress on the internal parts. If you're going to have a long term display of the set, I think it really should be flat. But for my temporary display for two months, I'm going to hang it. After that, I'm going to take it down and probably get a cardboard box with some padding and package it back up and put it away just because I have no permanent display space that I can store something this big. And one of the things that I started to think about when I was trying to decide what to use here is this rope is really, really cool. So this is this Atwood rope micro cord and it's a woven cord as opposed to a spun cord. So it holds straight. And this is what I actually use for my big Technic models. And this is the micro cord and it's the 100 pound test. And I think it can hold way more than 100 pounds, right? And they also have a nano cord, which is about a 30 pound test. And that's what I use for more of the smaller Technic models as a, as a replacement string. And it works really well. I couldn't use that for this, but visually I thought I was going to go with a little bit beefier cord to hold the model. And real quickly now, let me just show you exactly how I threaded this in to make it all work and to make it so it would come up right around the panel so I wouldn't actually have to change stuff. All right, so let's actually take a look about how this is strung up. You can see that I have my central plate here and how the um, strings, there we go, all pull. And so what were the key things that I was looking for when trying to decide exactly where to put these strings? Well, you can see on this side, I wanted to put it just behind so that the angle on this string when it pulled just grazed the edge of this plate, then run it through and just above the Technic bricks over here and over here again, pulling it just so the it will graze the edge of this Technic plate when it's put on. We'll snap that guy in there. All right, so you can see with a little bit of tension, see it's just grazing the edge of the plate so that when you put tension on it, right, it can pull up and it's not going to try and put too much tension on those plates. All right, what about in the front? Front, I ran through the very front up here. I wanted to sort of be as back as far as I could, but what I was worried about there was the fact that when this guy is on, and this is a little bit harder to, to figure, but when this guy's on, like that, and it's pulling back, right, because my plate is going to be back here, I wanted it as far forward so it didn't put as much pressure on that if I could. Now this is harder to stick down, so I'm not going to stick it down right away. The other option is actually to run the string right through these spots and then that allows you to attach right in here. And I didn't do that, I decided to stay forward a little bit. And so let's look and see. Oh, I just heard something click off there. All right, I'm not going to stick that one down, but let's go ahead and stick that one in. We'll go ahead and stick this one on. You sort of have sort of tricky to get by all of the strings and make sure it's in the right spot. So that has to go underneath there. All right? So again, when it pulls, it's pulling right between these two plates. Yes, it's going to lift up a little bit, but I'm trying to limit the pressure as much as I can. And on this side, we can stick this one in. Again, so it comes right between those plates. That on, 
that on. This is always tricky to get on because you have to get under that little bar there. All right, so now that all the pieces are on except for this front one, it's not fully attached, but you get the idea. Get all that arranged. Something got, there we go. All right, so now when you're like that, now you can actually pick the whole thing up. And yes, it's applying a little bit of pressure back there, but not too bad. Here, it's not too bad either. Or you can spin it around by just shifting how you pick this thing up. Right? You can make it turn and bank and do all sorts of great things. So there you go. So that's how you're going to do the, how you can put the wires in there. And then this, of course, will be attached to something coming up. All right. So that's how I threaded it in. And that's how I'm going to hang it up to display it. And when I was looking at how big this was, remember how in my other show, if you watched, I said it was 33 pounds. Well, it turns out I was wrong. It was closer to 29 pounds. So let me throw up the corrected graph there of it on all the exclusives. So you can see it's still really close to that line. But when I was thinking about the cord to use, I said, well, how much does this actually weigh? I know the whole thing weighs 29 pounds, but how much does the Millennium Falcon actually weigh? Well, it turns out the Millennium Falcon weighs about 15 pounds. And the rest of that is you have uh, six pounds or five pounds for your box. You know, you have seven pounds for your instruction manual, which I thought was very interesting, and that this instruction manual weighs more than this entire set, right? So that instruction manual is heavier, this, this whole set. So when you're thinking about this weight, you know, when I put that graph up there, that weight is the whole thing together, the box, the packaging, the manual, all the cardboard. And the weight of the Lego is actually significantly less than that weight that is publicly available. Can I do anything about that? No, without taking every, building everything and weighing everyone, I can't use that data very accurately, but it is something to pay attention to. I would guess that more or less the ratios are about the same, so the data still holds. But So we have about 15 pounds total in Lego here. And I do have my measuring stick here just so we can measure how long it is. So we have 33 inches again, pretty close, 33 by about 24, maybe 25, 24 and a half, something like that. So it is really big if you're thinking about designing something to put it in. Again, about the same size as the old one. So what are you going to do with yours? Are you going to do a coffee table? In fact, this box is sturdy enough. You could probably drop a piece of glass on that and make it its own coffee table as well. Would be kind of cool. So you have to know what you're going to do with the set before you open it and start building it because it is not something you want to take apart. And it's not something that once you get that internal frame and add some of these pieces on, it will no longer fit back into the box if you want to stop building it. So I'm going to do one more show after this one about the Millennium Falcon because I have a friend who has the 10179 and has a bunch of other Millennium Falcons. We're going to have a little Millennium Falcon Fest. I'll hope to bring that to you next week. So until next time, Lego on. Thank <laughs> you.